Hey, I'm Jake from the Tattoo Improvement Network, and this is Fireside Technique. On today's episode, we're going to talk about tucking your ears in your baseball cap. And the reason that I do this is to convince 20-year-olds of how ridiculous they actually look. You guys look exactly like this when you tuck your ears this way. So don't do it. Even this, even this is better than this. It's a fact. The more you know. The more you know. That's not actually, that's not actually what this show's about today. We're going to talk today about um, looping those needles. You know what I mean. You know when those needles need looping? You gotta loop them good. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, come on over here if our cord will reach. We're gonna talk about using an eye loop on your needles. Uh, and we'll talk about why you might do it and we'll talk about how to do it. So when I started tattooing many years ago, we made our needles for each day. So we'd get to the shop a little early, make enough needles to get us through the day, and then we would use an eye loop like one of these guys. Here's one from Tat Soul that they gave away as a little freebie hidden in one of their goodie bags because they're good people. And then here's one that I actually bought on Amazon, I think. Uh, let me see if I can get in it. And uh, these are jeweler's loops, basically, what a jeweler would use to, to work on or to assess jewelry. And we use them for tattoo needles. This one actually has lights built into it. I don't know why you would have a blue light, but I use the white lights when I use it. Uh, so, like I said, I would, um, I would build needles uh, each day to use for that day. And we would loop the needles, we would look at the needles through an eye loop to ensure that they were uh, all even, that they were sharp, coming to a clean point, uh, and that the solder uh, went where we wanted it and was not where we didn't want it. So uh, let's talk first about what you, what you do want to see when you're looking through an eye loop. Actually, let's talk first about how to look through an eye loop. Let me use this little one from Tat Soul here. So what I do, if you have lights, I like to put it up against a flat light source. Uh, if you don't have a flat light source, anything, if you've got a flat area of wall, something that, um, uh, that doesn't have a lot of distraction or other things to compete, with, compete for your eye's attention. So I like to hold it against the, uh, the light, and I put the loop up close to it, and it's in focus, and then I back it away. It may blur a little bit, and then it'll come into focus even closer and tighter. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but we'll clip in uh, kind of an, uh, a little clip of what it should look like. Uh, so what I'm looking for here, I want to make sure that the needles are all reaching the same point. This is a curved or a rounded mag, so I want to make sure, ensure that the curve is consistent. Uh, I want to see that all of the needles are reaching the same point. I want to make sure that they're all parallel with each other and one is an inset or outset. Uh, I want to make sure that there are no barbs or hooks in the needle. Uh, because remember, our, our goal here is to get the most saturation in the skin while causing the least trauma. And needles can really help in that regard or they can really hinder in that regard. So another thing that I want to look for is my solder. Uh, does the solder end at a consistent point? Does it run way down into? The, all right. Does it run into the um, uh, in between the needles and run way too low? Uh, we talk sometimes about loose and tight groupings of needles, and that basically is how far the solder uh, is pulled down. The farther that solder is pulled down, the the tighter that grouping will actually be, and the further back the solder is, the looser that grouping typically is. So what we don't want is little gobs of solder, and we don't want solder way down here in the, uh, near the tips. And the reason being is, uh, for one, it can cause hang up and keep your machine from running the way that you want it to if you've got little gobs of solder that are catching the tube on the, on the, on the stroke back and forth. Uh, second, secondary, um, you, you want to make sure that, that you can hold plenty of ink within these needles, and the further down that that solder goes, the less ink that can actually sit in there, and it'll sometimes kind of hinder your ink flow. You'll notice that it doesn't flow consistently. So if you get a needle that has solder that's way too far down or has gobs of solder, just trash it. Obviously, if it's hooked or barbed or anything like that, uh, you'd want to get rid of it. Uh, and you just want something that is nice and consistent. Uh, each needle evenly spaced from the one next to it. Uh, all of the points look the same. Uh, the solder line is clean, and you should be good to go. Make sure to grab one of these if you don't have one already. 
Uh, this I probably paid 10 bucks for on Amazon. Uh, well worth it. Use it all the time. These, these needles are made in, in such bulk. And, uh, you know, I know when we were making them ourselves, I would mess up, you know, two out of every ten and have to throw them away. And I was being careful and only making eight or ten at a time. These people are making thousands and thousands at a time. And while their processes are pretty good, and for the most part they, they do a good job, uh, I do find them on a fairly regular basis with issues. And if you don't, uh, if you don't use one of these, you'll never know until it's too late. And then you end up with a beat-up tattoo. So, hope that helps. Subscribe to our mailing list at TattooImprovement.com uh, and leave us a comment. Thank you guys.